Hey everybody, Andy here with Divin.com. Super excited to be here today because we are talking about fins. What you see in front of you, just a small sampling of all the fins that were sent to us to test. We scoured the internet, talked to dive professionals, and the test we came up with, to the extent that we came up with it, we can't find it anywhere. So this is a one-of-a-kind test. To the best of our knowledge, it's never been done before. This is a side-by-side -side test, 100% data-driven, no opinions thrown in there at all. But because there's so many, this is a long, long video. What you'll see down below you here at the bottom of the video, you can jump chapter to chapter to chapter and check out the fins that you might want to look at, check out some fins that you've never heard about, etc., etc. All the fins are labeled in this video alphabetically, so you can just go through it alphabetically, and then at the end is our results. Which fins won this data-driven test? It's super exciting. I think you're going to learn a lot with this video. I know I'm excited. Let's dive in. So how did we test the fins? Well, it was a two-phase test. In the first phase, it was all measuring kicks. In the second phase, it was measuring control and maneuverability. In the kick phase, it was very, very objective. We went down to the pool, swam 100 feet, measured the kick cycles in both the flutter kick and the frog kick, did the math on it, and gave you a feet per kick cycle for both styles. The second part, the control and maneuverability is a little bit more subjective. That was what I thought about these fins in the pool. How well do they helicopter turn? How well do they back fin? And now that's the reason it's subjective is because you may find a certain fin that maybe I didn't like or one that I really liked and you don't like. So we all have our opinions on that. But those scored from one to five, one being something I thought maybe could use a lot more work, five being dang near perfect. So a few of the constants that went into this test was me, number one, being 5'9", 175-ish pounds, uh, wearing medium-large or large fins in all the selections. Every selection was an open hill fin. And when I was kicking, I would go down and try to do really big flutter kicks. I didn't want to try to race. I would kick and pause, kick and pause. And then with the frog kick, I would kick and glide until I came to almost a complete stop to reset my kick cycle and I would go. I wore the same equipment all the time, a skin shirt, dive trunks, and my same BC the entire time. Uh, so you may see some differences as we run along. I, in my daily life, am a frog kicker. So I think you're going to see a little bit more efficiency in the numbers for frog kick versus flutter. But every single flutter kick was exactly the same. So know that as we go forward. Let's take a look at how we classify or group the fins that we test. For our purposes, we break them down into three primary groups. There may be a combination of one or two along the way that you might see. Before our test, we group them into a single group. Uh, for starters, we have the traditional paddle fin. A paddle fin is flat, it's longer, it's a little bit more flexible, has no other openings besides the place where you put your foot. Then we have the channel fins. You'll notice the channels run along here in the middle of the body of the fin. You'll also see this little opening here in the foot. That does not make it a channel fin. This one has one, not a channel fin. So to be a channel fin, it has to have the openings that displace water as you're kicking inside the body of the fin. And lastly, we have the split fin. These work in good situations, certain situations, other times maybe not. We'll talk about that more in detail when we're talking about the specific split fins we tested. Let's take a look at some of the options you'll find on your open heel fins. All open heel fins will have a strap to secure your foot securely to the fin. They come in a couple different varieties. First, you have your traditional spring strap. Super durable, super hardy, long lasting, hard to replace if you ever need to replace it. Then you have your bungee strap, bungee rubberized strap. Not quite as strong or durable as the spring strap, but it's a lot lighter and travels way better. And finally, we have the adjustable strap. You slip your fin on and securely snug down the strap uh, to where you're secure in your uh, fin. It has little adjustment buttons on the side. You can loosen it, and it even has clips that you can undo it when you're done with your dive and you hand your fin up to the mate on the boat. Let's take a look at the Apex RK3 fins. These are a channel fin. You can see the channel running right here through the middle of the blade. These are gaining a lot of popularity among the dive community, both recreational and technical divers. 
Uh, these weigh roughly five pounds for the pair, just a little bit less. And the larges I have here are just right under 21 and a half inches. Those vary depending on sizes. The sizes the, these come in are medium, large, and super. Uh, the RK3s come in five separate colors. If you're curious about RK3, they also come in an HD version that's a little bit more negatively buoyant. Those come in three separate colors. They weigh about the same. They look about the same. They perform about the same. Uh, so there you have it. The RK3s did really well in the pool. Gave me 24 kick cycles using the flutter kick to go 100 feet and 22 frog kicks to go that same distance. I rated them a 4.5 out of 5 on turning capabilities and a 4.5 out of 5 on back fitting. The one thing I will say about RK3s is they do have a pretty big foot pocket. Uh, I felt a little bit of play in there with these. If you have wider feet, great for you. If you have narrower feet or smaller feet, make sure you try these on first. Here we have the Aqualung Storm Fins. Now these are a paddle fin specifically designed for travel. You can wear these with or without boots. So what that does is it makes, you don't have to have the exact size with the full foot fin. Now you have an open hill fin that you can wear barefooted. So if you love going to the warm places, you're on a boat all the time, you're not doing a lot of walking, these are perfect for you. They come in at 22 and a half inches. They weigh less than three pounds for this set, even all the way up to extra large, super light, they have kids and adult sizes, and they come in 11 separate colors, combinations that you can change out. Has a real nice bungee strap with the uh, finger pull. Works great. The Storm performed great in the pool. For a lightweight travel fin that you don't have to wear boots with, it did great. Uh, 23 flutter kicks to go 100 feet, and 22 frog kicks to go that same distance. So you're covering ground with this short fin that you can pack easily. Uh, they are a little bit less stiff than a traditional channel style fin or even some of your other paddle fins out there. So I gave them a 3.5 out of 5 for the, the turning and also a 3.5 out of 5 on the back finning. Uh, but these are great little travel fins. Let's take a look at the Atomic Aquatics Blade Fin. These are a traditional style paddle fin. The large size I have here runs 24 and a half inches. That length will vary slightly depending on the size you get. The sizes that these come in are small, medium, large, and extra large. Combined weight between the two fins is three pounds, making them an exceptionally light fin. They have a really cool, really adjustable heel strap that's easy to unclip and clip back. They come in seven colors to match all of your gear needs. And they come preset with a nice angle of attack to give you the most force from every kick you provide. The Atomic Aquatic Blade Fins were very consistent in the pool. To go 100 feet using the flutter kick, it took me 24 kick cycles to go that distance. They gave us just under four and a quarter feet per kick. Whereas with the frog kick, it took me 22 frog kicks to go that same 100 feet upping us to four and a half feet per frog kick. I rated these a 2.5 out of 5 on their turning capability and a 3 on the back finning. These are a little bit uh, floppier for me. I think that uh, the, the pre-built-in angle of attack kind of makes it a little bit hard to back up a little bit, maybe turn. When you're going straight forward, it works great. It's just those small little details that uh, brought this blade fit down just a little bit. Let's take a look at the Atomic Aquatic Split Fins. As the name suggests, these are a split fin. They're gaining popularity around the world. Uh, really coming up now, a lot of people wearing split fins. This really works. You don't have to kick as hard. You don't have to have as much power. There's a great many people within the population that benefit from these. The large size I have here is 24 and a half inches. They vary slightly depending on sizes, and those sizes are small, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, it's not specified by Atomic Aquatics how much these weigh, but I weighed them and they're right around 5 pounds. So it's pretty average for a split fin, maybe a little bit lighter than some others on the market. Uh, it comes with the, the hill strap that Atomic is known for. One button click. Comes in seven colors. In the pool, the Atomic Aquatic split fins were very consistent. To go 100 feet, it took me 27 flutter kick kick cycles. Switching over to frog kick, it took me 26. That gives us just under four feet per kick, whether it's the flutter or the frog. Now, some of y'all are watching this going, well, those numbers seem higher than some of the other fins. It is, 
That's because the way a split fin works, it took all the pressures off my legs. I may have had to kick more by just a few, but those numbers after a long day of diving, multiple dives, it starts to add up. And your feet get tired, your legs get tired. That's where the split fins come in and save you at the end of those days. When everybody else starts at 23 or 24, by the end of the week, they're at 30. You start at 27 kick cycles uh, to go 100 feet with the split fins. At the end of the week, you're still kicking 27. So they stay consistent the whole time you're diving. For me, I'm not very used to split fins, so turning and back thinning was a little hard for me. I scored these a two and a half on turns and a two on back fins. I just couldn't get the back fin down with these. I'm sure with a little bit of practice and more wear, that two and a half on the turns would go up. Let's take a look at the Cressy Frog Plus. This is a traditional paddle style fin. I have the medium large size here. They run 25 and a half inches. They vary from anywhere from 22 and a half to 27 inches depending on size. They have a lot of sizes, extra small, 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 medium, medium, large, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. This can fit a variety of feet. They are just over two pounds a pair, so they're super, super light. They come in five colors and they have an adjustable bungee strap. With a name like Frog, I was really excited to get these Cressy fins in the pool and try them out. The problem lies these are so, so light and they're hyper, hyper flexible. It doesn't give you much power while you're kicking, regardless of the kick. It took me 30 kick cycles to go 100 feet, which gives us a rate of just at three and a third feet per kick. The frog kick was a little bit better, but not by much. I got 26 frog kicks to go 100 feet. It only gives us three and three quarter feet per kick. They're just so, so light and so, so uh, floppy. On the turn rating, sitting turning at a helicopter turn, I gave them a 3 out of 5. But because of that floppiness with the back fitting, I had to only give them a 1. Uh, they're great in calm water, shallow water, where you're not having to do a lot of kicking. But if there's any chance where you're going to have to turn too much, any chance where you're going to have to fight current, these are going to give you a hard time. Let's take a look at the Cressy Thor fins. These are traditional paddle style fins. I am using a large size that measure in at 26 and a half inches, and they go up and down varying depending on size. Those sizes are extra small, 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 medium, medium, large, and extra large. I had to weigh them at home. It's not specified by the manufacturer, but they came in just around four pounds per the pair. And so they're decently light fins. They come in four colors, uh, and they have a really good bungee strap here, uh, a, a long-term uh, bungee strap that will last you a while. In the pool, the Cressy Thor was very consistent. It gave me 25 kick cycles using the flutter kick to go 100 feet. Gives us right at four feet per kick cycle. It improved a little bit with the frog kick. It only took me 22 frog kicks to go 100 feet. And that gives me just over four and a half feet per kick. So they performed nicely in that. I gave the rating of 3.5 out of 5 for both the helicopter turn and the back fin. So these are really consistent fins. They fit comfortably. They look nice. Not a bad fin. Let's take a look at a fin that really needs no introduction. You've seen this fin if you've been on a boat in your life. It's been around over 20 years since the 90s, doing the same exact thing day in and day out. From novice to tech divers, anybody can benefit from these fins. We're talking about the Dive Right XT fins. Traditional paddle style fin. In the large size, they run 23 and a half inches. In my mediums I have here, they're right at 22. The set together weighs anywhere from 4.7 to 6.3 pounds. That sounds heavier than they feel. They actually feel pretty light for a longer fin. Uh, the internet says they come in two colors, solid black and then this red color. But I have seen the gray ones floating around. So if you can get your hands on those, they're available in places. They come in your traditional sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. What we found with our test results, that in the pool, using the flutter kick, Going 100 feet, I managed 25 kick cycles in the flutter kick. Gives us 4 foot per kick, while with the frog kick, it only took me 20 kick cycles to go down and back in the pool 100 feet. Gives us 5 feet per kick. This is honestly one of the best frog kicking fins on the market. The turn rating, I gave it a little bit lower, 3.5 out of 5. Basically for me, take it with a grain of salt, these are a little bit floppier than I'm used to. And so that floppiness kind of made it hard for me to turn. 
Doesn't mean you'll find it hard to turn. Same thing with the back fitting. I gave it 3.5 out of 5. Just in that simple little test, it's the, the floppiness to this fin makes it a little bit hard for me personally to back fin. The world loves their wetsuit, but let's take a look at the fourth element tech fins. These are a channel fin. You can see the channels running along the blade portion of the fin. In the large size that I have here, they run 20 and a half inches. It's not specified by the manufacturer, but I did an at home uh, weighing test and they weigh roughly five pounds for this set. They come in three colors. But you're going to be hard pressed to find a cooler color than this aqua blue they have here. It's going to show up nice in all the pictures you put on social media bragging back home about what cool things you're doing. They come in four sizes, medium, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. So these are perfect for divers with uh, bigger feet. In the pool, the fourth element tech fins were very consistent. They gave us a kick cycle of 22 for 100 feet. Gives us an average of 4.5 feet per kick makes it one of the most efficient flutter kicker fins we tested so if you're a flutter kicker you're gonna love these didn't do too bad on the frog kicks either 24 kicks to go 100 feet gives us an average of just under four and a quarter feet per kick the turn rating I gave these guys a four really really high one of the better turning fins that I tested it may be because they're short fins and I generally use a shorter fin it gives me a little bit more control I liked it as far as back fitting they run a little bit lighter than my traditional fin so I gave them a 3.5 but that doesn't mean with some practice and a little bit more time in the pool and in the water these couldn't be some of the best back fitting fins on the market Let's take a look at the Hollis F1 fins. These are the LT version. There's the traditional F1 and then there's the LT version. These run at 22 inches for the regular size I have. It comes in three sizes, regular, large, and extra large. Goes up to 24 and a half inches on those extra large. These are the heaviest fins we tested, which means I absolutely love them. They're six and a half pounds per pair. So they are pretty heavy. Depends on if you like heavy fins or not. Uh, they do work well though for heavy fins. They are a channel fin. You'll see the small channels that run along the blade. They are smaller channels, but they work the same way any other channel fin would work. They come in three colors. This gray color we have, white and yellow. The Hollis F1 LT in the pool was very consistent. It gave me 24 kick cycles, both in the flutter and the frog kick. So regardless of what kind of kick you use, it's taking you down, uh, down the path. That gives us just under four and a quarter feet per kick, regardless of your kick cycle. Where this fin really shined, it was my favorite helicopter turning fin. I rated it four and a half out of five. It turned on a dime. It turned really well going straight. It turned really well from a dead stop. If you're a big turner, you're going to really like this. It also did really, really well with the back finning. I gave it a four out of five. Being a heavier fin, it really sets your backside down and allows you to draw that water backwards. Great fin for those guys that get into wrecks, get around wrecks, they want to back fin, they want to turn. You're going to love these, even though they are a little bit heavier. One of the most well-known and well-liked fins on the market just got a little bit better. The Marius Avanti Quattro Plus came out with a new design, new materials. They tweaked it just a little bit to improve on their great design that they already have. This is a paddle fin. The regular size I have here is 25 and a half inches. That length will vary depending on the size you get. They come in small, regular, and extra large. They are just under four pounds for the pair of fins. So for being as long as they are, they're pretty dang light. They come with a really good bungee heel strap, easy on, easy off. They come in seven different colors. In the pool, the Quattro Plus was very consistent. Frog kick, flutter kick, both of them. 23 kick cycles for 100 feet. Gave us just under four and a half feet per kick cycle. They are a little bit long for my taste, a little bit light. Gave me a little bit of problems, but I still rated them a three and a half out of five on their turning capability and a three on the back fitting. They're just a little bit, a little too wobbly for me, a little bit too light. You may find something different with that. That's why I ranked them where I did, but this is a very consistent, comfortable fin. Let's take a look at the Mares Power Planas. Now we're classifying these as paddle fins. Some people think they're a little bit more channel fin because it does have the openings here, but in a traditional channel fin, they run along the fin there, the fin blade. Uh, they perform a lot like a channel fin though, so it's up to you uh, what you want to classify them as 
but for our testing we're calling them a paddle fin uh, and the regular size I have here they are 21 and a half inches long the sizes that they come in are small regular large and extra large they weigh 2.4 pounds each so just under five pounds for the set so they are a little bit of a heavier fin but if you like heavier fins with that channel style you're really going to like these all our research shows that there's only one color of these fins out on the market and that's this black so if you love being blacked out these are the great fins for you our testing in the pool showed that the mars power planet is a great efficient fin at 100 feet, it gave me 24 flutter kicks, which is just under four and a quarter feet per kick. Whereas the frog kick, it only took me 21 kicks to go 100 feet. That's almost five feet per kick. Very efficient. I rated this fin four and a half out of five on turns. It turns on a dime in a helicopter turn. It turns going straight. You want to make that turn. It's going to fight those currents great for you. On back fin, I gave it a three out of five. It is a little bit more wobbly than I'm used to. I bet with some practice, though, we can get this up a lot higher than that. Great performing fin for all levels of divers. Let's take a look at the Oceanic Viper 2 fins. These are a traditional paddle fin. I am using a large sized, which is at 24 inches, and they vary in sizes depending on the size, which is small, medium, large, and extra large. The weight is not specified by the manufacturer, but I weighed them, and they're right around 4 pounds, so fairly light. Uh, they come in five colors. What's really cool about the Viper 2 is the center of the blade is pretty soft and moldable, which means it displaces a lot of water, and it's actually pretty wide for a paddle fin. The Oceanic Viper 2 did very respectable in the pool. Using the flutter kick, I was able to to generate 25 kick cycles to go 100 feet which gave me right at four feet per kick cycle and improved a little bit once we switched to frog went down to 22 kicks per 100 feet which is over four and a half feet per frog kick that middle part the softness that i was talking about the pliability did really really well with the turns it's able to grab that water and push it aside and have those those turns turn out really nice so i gave it a four out of five but that same wobbly center kind of hurts it on the back finning so i dropped it down to three uh still a very all-around great fin for anybody from novice to expert it meets the needs of almost every diver out there these are the scuba pro go travel fins now they are a paddle fin specifically designed for travel these can be worn with or without boots depending on what size you pick up it's always a hard time finding full foot fins that fit exactly how you want them and now you can wear some fins barefooted and feel comfortable diving in them these measure in at 20 inches long so they're a little bit short but that makes them great for travel they can actually fit inside of uh approved carry-on uh, suitcases the sizes they do come in are extra small and small small medium medium large and then large and extra large and they weigh just under two pounds super light easy to travel and they come in six uh, separate colors a cool thing scuba pro has done is they've created these little notches here to store these you slide one into the other then if you look at the back end these are a little bit narrower than your traditional fins. So you just slide your heel strap over it. And now you've got a complete set that's not wiggling around, not going anywhere, staying secure while you travel. In the name of transparency, I have to let you know that these are my personal fins. I wear these in the pool when I'm teaching. A lot of instructors have gone to wearing a fin like this because our boots were just getting so torn up from the chlorine in the pool that we went to the fins that you don't have to wear a boot with. And so I have a little bit more familiarity with these. And so testing them may affect the numbers just a little bit. Uh, to go 100 feet, it took me 24 flutter kick kick cycles and 22 frog kicks to go the same distance. I rated them both a 3.5 out of 5 on turning and back finning. Again, like I said, these are mine. So against those other super light travel fins you don't have to wear boots with, those numbers might be off a little bit. Let's take a look at the Scuba Pro Go Sport Gorilla Fins. These are a paddle fin that's super similar to the Scuba Pro Go Sport Fins, except these are a little bit stiffer, a little bit hardier, designed to wear with boots, whereas the Sport, uh, you're not, you don't wear boots, or you can if you get bigger, but these are designed, it even says on the bottom, boot fit. Uh, this isn't published 
uh, on any website, but I did some measuring at home. The large size I have here, 21 and a half inches. The pair weighs just around four pounds, so light enough to still travel with. And those measurements will change a little bit depending on the size you get. And those sizes that these come in are extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And as of right now, there's two colors out there, but it's really hard to beat this bright, bright orange. Nobody's going to lose you underwater. Uh, get these for your buddy. You're always going to know where they're at. In the pool, the Go Sport Gorillas perform just like the Go Sports. Pretty, pretty similar. Same design. Uh, same setup. These have the added channels on here that filter a little bit of water more towards the middle for you. Doesn't make a whole, whole lot of difference. Doing the flutter kick, it took me 24 kick cycles to go that 100 feet, whereas it took me 22 frog kicks to go the same distance. That's exactly the same measurements we got with the Go Sport, the original Go Sports. Uh, ranked them 3.5 out of 5 on both turning capabilities and back fitting. So all the results came out. These The Go Sport Gorillas are really, really similar to the Go Sports. The only difference is, do you want to wear a boot? Do you not want to wear a boot? And that's kind of where your decision is going to be. Here we have the Scuba Pro Jet Fins. These are a channel fin. You can see the channels right here in the blade that have been around since 1965 with very little changes to the material, to the design. They've lasted the test of time. Uh, they're a pretty short fin, only 18 inches and only oh, and six pounds here in my large size. And that varies a little bit depending on sizes. And the Jet does come in a lot of sizes. Small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL, and all the way up to 3XL. Uh, it's a little bit stiffer than a lot of fins on the market. It's a little bit heavier than a lot of fins on the market. So that's kind of what you want to have to like to, to be a jet fin fan. They come in seven traditional colors and uh, three new camo combos. Uh, you can see back here they've got the blue camo. They've got a nice uh, uh, white camo. Sharp looking fins. I need to preface the results of the jet fins here before I give you the numbers. Uh, these are my fins. I've been wearing them for years and years. I wear them day in and day out. I wear them whether I'm wearing skins or a wetsuit or a dry suit, whether I'm teaching or whether I'm diving for fun. Uh, you can see I've got them pretty scuffed up and I've even wore off the, the nylon cover on the spring heel. With that being said, these are great fins uh, to go 100 feet in the pool. It, using the flutter kick, it took me 23 kick cycles. Using the frog kick, it took me 21 frog kicks. I rate them a 4.5 uh, out of 5 on turning capabilities and 4.5 out of 5 on back fitting. Again, like I said, maybe with a little grain of salt, these numbers, uh, I'll take that into account when we're judging all the fins together because these are my personal fins. Let's take a look at the Scuba Pro S Tech fins. These are a paddle fin. They come pre-bent at 30 degrees, increases that angle of attack, makes it really, really easy to push. Some measuring at home with my large size. They're 22 and a half inches and the set weighs just around four and a half pounds. That weight will change though depending on sizes and the weight will actually change depending on how you have these fins set up. We'll talk about that in just a minute. They only come in one color for now. But before long, we just talked to Scuba Pro, new colors are going to start coming out. You can mix and match them. They do come with a little tool. You can take the little plug out, change the front of the fin with the foot pockets, the blade with the foot pockets, and that's where you can change those colors in and out. Now, here's what I was talking about, how the fin might weigh different depending on how you have it set up. The S-Tech is really innovative is in that they came out, they added a little weight here on the blade. This comes in and out. You can take it in and out. That makes these fins either negative, neutral, or positive, depending on how you want to dive them. If you're in dry suit, you want to go super heavy. If you're in skins, you want to go super light. You can change that. It's just a simple Allen wrench. Just take it in and out, put it in and out. Super innovative. Now, in the pool, these didn't feel like your traditional paddle fins. They didn't feel loose and floppy. I know people love paddle fins, but from my experience, that's my description. These felt a lot stiffer, nice and heavy. They actually felt like the Scuba Pro Jet fins. And so during testing them with the flutter to go 100 feet, it only took me 22 kick cycles. And the same exact with the frog, it only took me 22 frog kicks to go that 100 feet. Now I rated these both a four out of four out of five on the turning capabilities and the back finning. Like I said, this really felt like a channel fin, even though it's not necessarily a channel fin. It may be considered that because it's open here in the middle, but we're calling them a paddle fin. It just so happened to feel like a channel fin. 
Let's take a look at the Scuba Pro Sea Wing Supernovas. These are a paddle fin. Uh, did some measuring at home. The large size I have here, 24 inches, they're pretty long fin, but they only weigh about four pounds together, so they're pretty, pretty light. And those measurements will change just a little bit depending on your size that you get. The sizes that these come in are extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. It comes in two separate colors, but we just talked with Scuba Pro and they're going to start releasing a whole bunch of different colors out there you can mix and map, match with. And that's what's really neat about these. If you see here, it's got this little lock peg that you can pull out with the tool that comes with it. You pop that out and this fin splits in half. That makes great traveling and it also means you can add different colors. You can have a white back and a black front. I think they're coming out with a whole bunch of different rainbow colors. So keep your eyes open for that. Possibly by the time that this video is out, by the time you're watching it, they're going to have all those colors out there. Testing these fins in the pool was a blast. These fins flat out fly. They're some of the fastest fins I've tried. On the flutter kick, it only took me 22 kicks to get that 100 feet, and it took me 22 frog kicks. Same exact thing. There's instructors out there that will not let their students use these during the open water section of the class because they'll just bolt and they miss them. They are fast, fast fins, whether you flutter or frog kick. They lose a bit because of the design, because of the bendability there in the middle with the turning and the, the back fitting. Not horrible, but I gave them a three out of five on the turning capability. I'm sure if I practice with them a lot more, that would get better. And the same goes for the back fitting, which I gave a 2.5 out of five. They're just hard to really get that water pushing back. With some practice though, I'm sure it would go up. Let's take a look at the SEAC Propulsion Fins. These are a traditional paddle style fin. I'm using the medium large size and they come in at 25.9 inches. They're one of the longer fins that we tested. The lengths vary depending on the size and those sizes are small, medium, medium, large, large, extra large. As a pair, they weigh just over four pounds, making them pretty light and they come in four colors. They also come with a nice bungee heel strap that will last a long time. The first thing that you notice when you get in the pool with the propulsion fins is that they're very, very wobbly. They bend really easy. They're easy to manipulate and that kind of hurts it as far as the kicks go. But the flutter kick, it took me 24 kicks to go 100 feet. It gives me just over four feet per flutter kick. With the frog kick, it took 26 frog kicks to go 100 feet, which is actually less than four feet. That wobbliness and that instability really shows when you're trying to turn. I give it a two out of five. And then that the, the base here being really easy to bend back, the back kicking was super, super hard in these. I give it a one out of a five. Uh, people that dive nice, calm waters, they don't turn a lot. They don't need to fight currents. These might work. But if you're going to be fighting some water out there, these may not be the best for you. So what we have here is the Tusa Sola fins. These are a traditional paddle style fin. Uh, they come with the easy buckle system here. The size I'm using are mediums, which come in 24 inches, and they weigh roughly four pounds for the set. So medium weight to lightweight. Uh, varies depending on size. They come from 22 inches to just under 25 inches, and those sizes that they come in are extra small, small, medium, and then the large, extra large combo. Uh, they do run a little bit bigger, I think, all Atusa fins do. That's why I wear the medium instead of a large. Uh, it's no problem. You just got to make sure you got the right size and they come in seven different colors uh, The Sola did well in the pool uh, to go 100 feet. It took me 24 flutter kick kick cycles to go that distance that same distance it took me 23 kicks to do the frog kick uh, On turning I gave them a four out of five and on back fitting I gave them a 3.5 out of five much like the switch, they perform like a traditional paddle style. They are a little bit stiffer though, so that helps me out. I feel like I can uh, make those small movements more and more. And it has this nice ridge along here that kind of channels that water. So they scored just a little bit higher than their uh, contemporary, the switch. This futuristic fin here is the Tusa switch fin. You'll notice the angle that it has here. Remember that we'll talk about it when we talk about the results from the test. This is a traditional paddle style fin. I have the size medium here. They run at 23 inches and roughly four pounds. They come in six different colors. Remember, we'll talk about this a little bit more. 
So now with the switch, I couldn't tell a difference with this new angle of attack. They felt like traditional paddle style fins. That doesn't mean they're bad. I just, I don't know how much this is going to help somebody if you're, especially if you're a frog kicker. Uh, if you're going along with the current, I don't know how much it's going to help. They did pretty well in the pool though. Uh, 100 feet, uh, 24 kick cycles using the flutter kick and 25 frog kicks to go that same 100 feet. They do turn pretty well. Uh, I gave them a 4 out of 5, but they are a little bit floppy for me. Uh, so I gave them 2.5 out of 5 on the back finning. What we have here is the Tusa Travel Right fins, or simply the Tusa TR fins. These are a paddle style fin designed specifically for travel. Means you can wear these with or without boots. So if you go somewhere nice and warm, nice soft beaches, you're always on a boat, you don't have to wear boots with these, and they travel great. They're super light. My pair of mediums here is just around three pounds, and they come in right at 20 and a half inches long. Come in various sizes to fit all the different feet out there from juniors to adults. Uh, and they come in two colors. They've got this nice, real strong bungee band on the back with the uh, finger clip. Makes it easy putting them on and off. The Travel Rights did well in the pool. Of all the travel lightweight fins that you don't need to wear a boot with, these are the floppiest. So you're going to get a little bit more play out of them. And that led us to find that to 100 feet, it took 24 kick cycles to use the flutter kick and 22 kick cycles to go the frog kick. Uh, I scored them a 3.5 out of 5 on the turning and a 4 out of 5 on the back fin. Great fins, great for travel, lightweight. Uh, not a huge fan of their heel strap. The foot pocket fit great, but it kept feeling like that heel strap wanted to slide around. It's got it's a little loose. I don't know if they make different sizes in heel straps. I would look into that if you want a pair of fins like this. We really like the BCs that Zegel puts out. Well, let's take a look at the Zegel Recon fins. The large size I have here, they run 22 inches. That's basically the size for all sizes you're going to get. Depending on the size though, they are going to weigh a little different. Weighing anywhere from three to three and a quarter pounds depending on the size. Each fin. That makes this one of the heaviest fins we tested. If you like heavy fins, if you dive dry a lot, you're going to love these. They come in three colors, they come in three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. In the pool, it took me 23 kick cycles using the flutter kick to go 100 feet. That gives us an average of 4.35 feet per kick. While doing the frog kick, it took me 22 kicks to complete the 100 feet, which gives us 4.55 feet per kick. Doing the helicopter turn, I gave these a 3.5. Good turnability, good rating. But on the back finning, I gave it a 4.5. This was one of the best back finning fins that I tested. That weight really helps lower that back side down and it allows you to pull yourself backwards. The testing is done and the results are in. Now it's time to hand out some awards. Some might surprise you. Some might make you run out and buy a new set of fins this afternoon. We're going to talk about the fins that gave us the best flutter kick, the fins with the best frog kick, the best average of the two, the best paddle fin that we think, the best channel fin, that we found the best split fin, some travel fin, and even the most innovative fin. Like I said, it might surprise you. You're not going to want to go anywhere. According to the hard objective data in the pool, these are our best flutter kick fins. The Seawing Supernova and the Fourth Element Tech fin. Both of these fins came in at just 22 flutter kicks per 100 feet. Gave us an average of over 4.5 feet per kick. That doesn't seem like a lot when you're just swimming in a 100-foot pool, but I'm going to tell you, you get out there on a long wreck, you're having to kick hard, these things are going to move you around. If you don't know how to frog kick, you need to learn, and there's no better way to learn than going out and getting a set of these fins, either of these fins. These won the frog competition, the frog kick competition, the Dive Right XT fins and the Scuba Pro Jet fins. I'm super excited about this category because I absolutely love both these fins, not just because they won the frog kick, but because they're just overall great fins. You won't go on a dive with advanced expert divers. They're not wearing something along these lines. Both of these only took 20 frog kicks to go 100 feet, and that gave us an average of 5 feet per kick. Great, great fins, super, super comfortable. I'm a little partial to these, if you can't tell, but I'm telling you, get these fins, you'll love them. This is where our rating gets a little bit more subjective. This isn't just numbers-based. While all these were great numbers, a lot of this comes down to how I felt, how controllable they are, how did they feel while I was turning and back finning. 
did they give good flutter kicks and good frog kicks and so our choice for the best paddle fins out there are the dive right xt's the Zegel rangers and the mares power planner pros now the Zegels and the mares are going to be a little bit more negative than your dive right so they're a little bit harder to travel with but that negative buoyancy is going to help you with those back finnings and those helicopter turns great great fins all around this is our choice for paddle fins so if you really really like paddle fins these three will not do you wrong. Now this category gets a little bit more subjective. It's kind of how did I feel using these fins? How did they perform? Obviously we looked at flutter kick, we looked at frog kick, we looked at turning and back fitting. We looked at all the different things to kind of compile a list and say these fins are the greatest out there. So we're gonna look at the best channel fins. So now it's hard to go past these guys back here, the School Pro Jets, but we left them off because there's some great, great fins out there on the market. The fourth element tech fins, the Hollis F1s and the Apex uh, RK3s. These are all great, great channel fins. I think channel fins surpass paddle fins, but that's a personal Andy says opinion. You don't have to buy it. I just think that's how it works. So these are all great, great fins. The Hollis are a little bit more negative than the tech fins or the RK3s. The RK3 does make an HD version that's more negative if you need a heavier fin, if you're drive, diving dry or any of that potential uh, type of diving out there. These are great, great, great fins, great for frog kicking especially, great for control. You will not be disappointed with these fins. If you were to jump on any online scuba forum right now, there's bound to be the trashing of the split fin. It seems to be a fun thing to do, trashing split fins, and I don't see it. I don't think it makes sense. Split fins are great for a certain segment of the population. I'll tell you what, people that come in to see me as an instructor that have knee or hip problems, they've had back problems, I put them in split fins and they feel great. You take a student that's been bicycle kicking, put them in split fins and all of a sudden that kick turns into greatness. Do they have as much control as a channel fin? No. Are you going to be able to back fin as good as some other fins? No, but I'm going to tell you what, for the majority of people out there diving, they're diving warm water, calm water, and these fit great. So our choice for best split fin of the year is the Atomic split fin. Atomic make great fins. All they've done now is provided a great split fin. Use these things, you'll be able to dive, especially if you have a long, long dive trip and you're diving day after day after day and you come up and your ankles are sore, your knees are sore, guess what? Switch to these and it's gonna solve those problems. So we can't recommend the Atomic split fins enough for a vast majority of divers out there. Now I guess any fin that you can fit in your luggage or any fin that you're willing to pack on vacation is a great travel fin. We kind of broke it down even further than that with this. We wanted a fin that would be great for diving and it would even be great for snorkeling at the end of the day when the family's done eating dinner and you just walk in and you want to snorkel a little bit. Uh, and we wanted a fin that you didn't have to wear boots with. And so that's, we came up with the Aqualung Storm. These are some great, great travel fins, super, super light. They're a little bit stiffer though than the other fins designed like this. So you're going to get a little bit more control underwater while you're diving. And they're light enough that while you're snorkeling, you're going to have a great, great time. Great for younger divers. Great for divers that don't like to lug around a lot of heavy rubber on their feet. Great, great fins. They perform almost like a traditional sized fin, except they're shorter. They run great. They feel great. The heel strap on these really, really made a difference. Great fins for travel. I imagine a few of y'all watching this wish we still dove with horse collar BCs or that we had tanks with the reserve valve switch. You don't like change. Change happens. Change is slow. Innovation is great. So we had to pick a set of fins that did the, the best job of innovating this year. And that comes down to the Scuba Pro s -Tech. These are the most innovative fins that we tested. I would say they're probably on the entire market. And it's all because of this little spot here. These fins take the spot of three fins. You want your super heavy fins while you're diving dry. You want your neutral fins while you're wearing your five mil. And you want negative fins while you're wearing skins and having fun. In one fin, you change that weight and it does the job of three fins. Very innovative, very cost effective. Instead of going out and buying three sets of fins, trying to travel with three sets of fins, all you do is buy an Allen wrench, change that weight system, and you're good to go. We want to thank you for watching our fins rundown. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you found it informational. Above all, we hope that now you can go make an informed decision when you're out shopping for fins. 
If you like what we're doing, go ahead and hit those buttons below. Like, share, and subscribe. Drop us a comment and let us know where you're watching from. Can't wait to see you. Until next time, happy bubbles.